Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Arts University Bournemouth course in Architecture, the BA course, which is the three-year part one RIBA ARB course. Um, so, Arts University Bournemouth, first of all, a general introduction. It's quite important to realise that one of the things that's distinctive about our way of teaching is the actual context of the Arts University. We're a small specialist arts uh, university. We only teach creative arts subjects. And um, architecture is embedded in a, a group of courses with interior architecture, model making, subject area. Um, but we're also alongside everything from acting and filmmaking, dance, graphic design, all these other creative subjects. And uh, we share some sort of common things in practice. So that the idea of maker culture, the idea that we all make things, um, some things are more physical than others, perhaps, but we all have our different media, but we're all interested in the creative process of how to get from maybe nothing to something. And uh, we um, are interested in that creative thinking. Um, it's also important to realize that we tend to integrate all our teaching so that rather than having courses in theory and courses in practice, you're often asked to demonstrate theoretical knowledge in your practical work. Um, practical skills and critical thinking run in parallel all the time. So in that way, you're always embedding your uh, learning in your practice and um, being assessed on the basis of your practice rather than through individual exams or anything. Um, innovation, collaboration, and uh, connectedness, these are the three principles that I talk a little bit about in terms of the architecture course, but they apply to everything we do here. Uh, the structure of the course, as I was saying, is a three-year uh, degree. It runs for 30 weeks a year. Uh, the levels, the first year is called level four, second year level five, third year level six, which is the British um, uh, system of uh, naming the different years. And at the end of that three years, you have the uh, you pass and you get the um, ARB, RIBA part one qualification. Um, if you wish to continue to a second professional level, that goes uh, usually after a year out in practice, which allows you to um, not only use some of your skills, but also gain additional skills in practice. You then return and do a master's course. You can do that with us, or you can do it at other universities if you wish to change. Uh, but we run the two-year master's of architecture, the MArch. Uh, and uh, after that, in order to qualify as an architect in Britain, you need to then continue for at least another year and take the um, ARB, RIBA Part 3 exam, which is a professional practice exam. In terms of the architecture course and the application of our kind of uh, curriculum and our, th our critical thinking, there are these different things I'd like to discuss. The making of architecture as part of our maker culture, studio culture, collaborations, our links with professional practice, and uh, your own personal uh, development. Architecture is thoughtful making. We really start from a position of thinking of architecture as a tactile, tangible form of making practice, uh, so that rather than beginning in drawing, we actually begin in making. So you see a little example here on the left of a, a student making things out of uh, matchsticks and coffee stirrers and things, very simple materials, and then seeing how they might be deployed to make architectural-like structures, not for any particular purpose, but just to create interesting architectural spaces, and then drawing from those models in order to begin to understand the difference between 3D and two dimensions. Obviously, a lot of the time is spent working in two-dimensional media, but our final output, our final creative um, product, if you like, the thing we really make in architecture is uh, a three-dimensional inhabited space, a, a building or uh, some sort of other inhabited space. And of course, one of the interesting things about being in architecture is you always uh, one space removed from that. So we make things to think about the things we make. We make drawings and models and digital uh, media in order to um, sim simulate the final architectural proposal. And then we do all the drawings to help construct that final proposal. The example on the right is a larger scale one-to-one -one kiosk that was made by a couple of students a couple of years ago for the Bournemouth Arts Festival and it was a very simple idea of taking a little uh, flat pack kiosk and um, 
being able to use it to store information and to have, um, in this case, we had some benches that could be lifted out in the sunshine and uh, become part of a little public space. So this was an opportunity for a student to work with a live client, working with the arts festival, but also to make something full scale in the workshop. And all this was done in-house within our own workshops. How we learn is primarily in all our subject areas through studio culture. And uh, we have this little kind of expression here, you will experiment playfully, analyze thoughtfully, apply rigorously, and reflect critically. Now these processes are not um, linear, they're kind of cyclic, you go round and round doing these things all the time. You're making things, you're looking at them, thinking about them, trying to apply them to a situation, and then really critically thinking about the appropriateness or the technical issues or social issues or whatever the um, impact of what you're doing is. On the uh, left here, there's a couple of first year students making a, a model together. And uh, you can see here, one is looking and thinking, the other one is acting and uh, positioning something. And a lot of the models we do in first year are like this. They're very loose fit models where students can move things around and see different options and different possibilities. Uh, on the right, you see possibly what you maybe imagine an architecture studio looks like, which is with lots of laptops or computers and people doing digital drawings and things. But actually that all happens quite often alongside tactile making and research and being surrounded by other students' work and objects that you've made in the past or study models you're making at the moment. So it's not ever an entirely digital environment. We're always trying to make sure that uh, students are aware that the physicality, the tactile material quality of what they're making is very important. The more time you spend in the studio, the more you, you learn actually because our studios are open usually 9 till 9 every day until late in the evening and uh, students can come in and work there and be alongside other students. We have other suites you can go to like computer suites or we have workshops that you can go to as well. So the studio is an expanded area, it's not simply one studio, it's also going to the library and be able to work in the library and check out laptops from the library. So a general idea that you're on campus to work and create and uh, study alongside other students and really join a community of learners. Next issue I'd like to look at is collaboration. Uh, here you see some students um, working on a project with uh, fine art students. So uh, students in architecture often work with uh, course, other courses. These are arranged collaborations usually. Um, where we have uh, opportunities to work with maybe model making or graphic design or fine art or textiles, fashion, uh, on little projects, maybe for a day, maybe for a week. Um, students are also encouraged to collaborate with other students uh, when they get an opportunity. So occasionally you'll find students um, will go off and work maybe with a, a dance student for a day to maybe do some exercises, some drawing or something or to work closely with a student with another course, maybe graphic design, to realize a project. Um, we have examples, like last year we had a student who was working with a fashion student, so an architect student working with a fashion student and a commercial photography student to build a setting or to take some photography um, examples. And that work went into all three portfolios. Um, I'll describe a little bit how we uh, cope with all that assessment. but. Um, we really encourage students while they're here to build relationships with other students and uh, to find out both what they share in common as creative people, but also how their practice differs. So the different media other courses use is always interesting to, to explore. Uh, in this slide you see a little structure which is built out of um, small plywood sticks which are just held together with gravity, there's no glue or screws or anything. At the end of this exercise you just kick it down and build something else. And this is a project we developed with the artist Anais Wilder who lives between Scotland and Japan and does a lot of these very um, delicate structures where you build something up and you can do this in a small group of students and then um, uh, photograph it, draw it, explore it, see what kind of uh, effects you can create with just a very simple um, building element and then uh, knock it down and build something else. So it's a bit like a kind of um, Lego kit to explore architectural ideas. Uh, we've also done some collaborations with SPUD, which is an organization in the New Forest. This is a project they did called the Observatory, which is a couple of mobile studios 
and this was the first year visit um, to see these uh, in action and to study how they were made and uh, it's a, a really interesting example where the project was run through a competition and they asked for groups of artists and ar architects to submit and in fact the guy who initiated this final design, Ed, was an artist who got in contact with some friends who were architects and got the competition rolling. They weren't our students, but some of the entries were done by our students. Um, so uh, it was a project we followed right from the beginning. Professional links and the construction industry. Um, we have quite good relationship with local practices. Um, many of our students do their year out or are in full-time employment with practices within the region. Uh, on the left you see one of our students, in fact one of our BA students who's now returned to our master's course, and he's talking with a local practitioner about his work at the end of the year. So this is an opportunity to um, kind of uh, have short informal discussions with possible employers, and then there's usually an exchange of um, addresses and emails and stuff, and then students quite often get invited then to go and have an interview and hopefully actually gain a um, part one placement position. Uh, we have um, formal events like mentoring where third year students will visit local practices and uh, go three or four times during the year and sh not only show their own work but also see what the practice is doing and follow the practice work over a year and uh, that usually results as well in the opportunity for an interview. We can't necessarily guarantee you get a job but we can help you build the best possible portfolio for that opportunity. On the right you see a CNC cut panel which is part of a slot together system we developed working with Techni, who are a local um, uh, construction and shop fitting company, and uh, they gave us a lot of advice and help with uh, cutting these um, large elements of uh, plywood. Uh, so this was a project developed with industry and was um, shortlisted for an innovation award in the uh, National Timber Awards. We also take any opportunity we can to visit buildings under construction. So the uh, building you see here is the one that was in the first slide. It's the drawing studio. Um, the drawing studio was constructed in Germany in a shipyard. Uh, so we took 50 students out to Germany. We were in Berlin for four days, and then we took one day out to go and visit this uh, construction site. Uh, a fantastic opportunity to see one of our own buildings under construction. Uh, we're about to do the same with another building that we're building on site by the same architect which is um, Crab Architects, uh, led by Peter Cook. Uh, Professor Peter Cook studied in Bournemouth in the 1950s. He, he left uh, our part one course in 1958, and he's still practicing at the age of 82. Um, so uh, we welcome him back fairly regularly as a guest lecturer. Um, but also he's designed this drawing studio and is designing an innovation studio at the moment for us, which will be built not out of steel, but out of timber. And again, there's an opportunity there for some of our students to visit that process of uh, construction, as well as seeing it going to go on site. Uh, we also have regular visitors from practitioners. So this is uh, Lord Foster, Norman Foster visiting a couple of years ago. Um, some of our students from the university, particularly ones in model making, but also one of our architecture students have worked with the Foster Foundation in Madrid and uh, made um, models to help recreate models that were destroyed in the past on some of the early projects. So this was a, a great opportunity to meet a um, world-renowned practitioner. And as I was saying, we have strong links with Peter Cook and Crab Studio. And in fact, uh, our, fairly soon after they established the practice, we held their first um, exhibition. And these uh, big dripping tables that kind of hang off the wall were from a sketch by Peter um, and then they were uh, created by a couple of our students working in the workshop. Um, and then all the um, work was printed, well, much of the work was printed here, and some of the models were made by our model making students uh, within the exhibition. So um, it was a really nice opportunity working closely with a practice to create an exhibition. We did this, we do this, uh, we did this last year with Zaha Deed Architects as well. Uh, personal development, this is quite an important part of, uh, I think, both our university, but certainly on our course. On our, co our course, we actually assess something called the um, Personal Development Portfolio, or PDP, which is um, uh, about 20% of the mark uh, every term, every 
10-week block that we teach. Um, and uh, this is um, a way of capturing all the other things you do as well as the main project. So you're always doing a main project, you're always doing some sort of design project. But alongside that, you may have guest lectures, you may have visits, um, so trips to Berlin, like the one we showed, or visits from guest lectures, um, or collaboration weeks, or collaboration projects, or opportunities to work with other students. All these little extra things uh, get captured in the personal development portfolio. So in this case, you see um, a page from a sketchbook where a student was experimenting with some simple pen drawing techniques on a trip to New York. They submitted that as part of their PDP, and it gets assessed as part of their kind of um, working practice. And then the student on the right uh, spent a day in Copenhagen at the invitation of a brick factory that she'd written to um, about handmade bricks, and they invited her over for a visit uh, to actually experience making bricks. Uh, so that was a fantastic opportunity for a student. And then that all got documented and put in her own personal development portfolio. Uh, which is really just a report or a series of reports and sketchbooks that go alongside your other project work. And um, at the same time, the company following this visit, uh, the company came over to um, Bournemouth and gave a lecture to all our students. So all our students had a chance to document their lecture uh, and see the samples and put that in their own PDP. So in fact, all the students benefited from this one student's initiative to uh, find out more about uh, handmade bricks. A little bit more about professional accreditation. Um, we have uh, two kinds of uh, accreditation on this course. The first one is the Architectural Registration Board, um, which is the uh, British um, register of, of, of architects. Um, in order to go on the register, in order to use the title architect in Britain, we need to, uh, a student needs to have part one, part two, and part three. Uh, part one is the equivalent of the BA, uh, part two, in our case, is equivalent to the master's, and the part three is a separate exam that can be taken uh, at various universities across the country. Um, that's called prescription, so we carry part one and part two prescription for our two courses. Uh, there is also a validation process by the Royal Institute of British Architects who visit us every five years, and they will look at the student work, and they'll talk to staff and meet various people around the university, they'll look at our resources, and they'll validate us based on our um, uh, quality of, of, uh, of teaching and our quality of student work. So um, both those validations are held by the university. As I mentioned earlier, we teach in 10-week blocks. So here, very simply in this diagram, you can see that there are 10-week blocks. They don't always fit to the term structure. So at the moment, we have a 12-week term, but the, the first unit will finish in week 10, and then we start the next unit with some collaborative work uh, in week 11 and 12, then we have a, a break, and then we return and do the next eight weeks in the following term. Um, these 10 week blocks run throughout first and second year, and at the beginning of third year, there's a, a research unit of 10 weeks. And then the final thesis project, the final project we do to graduate, is actually over 20 weeks um, from uh, January through to May in uh, your final year. Alongside the final unit, we also do a professional practice unit. This is to prepare you for your year out and prepare you for your career path. Um, even for students who aren't continuing uh, into architecture, it's a really great opportunity to understand all the different processes of law and planning, building control, how offices operate. And uh, we uh, run that course uh, in the final months of the course. Uh, three distinguishing principles of our course. Um, the fact that it's an enriched curriculum where we do this professional development element, the PDP, I think is very important to stress. The fact that we integrate all our learning is very important, that uh, you apply your creativity all the time. We don't examine you in any individual area of study. We always expect the work to be submitted within a portfolio. So even the essays are written alongside your practical work, your design projects and are usually relevant to your design project. And we have themed learning outcomes so that the course is always assessed against similar themes. I can explain that a little bit more. The um, little perforated Lego model here is a kind of diagram of the way in which we think of the course and the way in which, although most of your time you're studying a design project, 
there are these little holes, these little gaps, so that we can have a guest lecture, we can have a trip somewhere, we can go to an exhibition, we can go to a site visit, you can go and do a collaboration project. And as long as you can fit it within your timetable, um, we will assess it if you put it into your personal uh, development portfolio. The nature of um, architecture is quite complex. There's lots of different things to learn. And so the portfolio hand-in is a very good way of making sure that, um, that all the elements are there. And as, as this image shows, sort of, they can be a bit jumbled up. You know, you do a bit of technology, you do a bit of design development, you do some theory and history. And then um, they take place at different times during the term. You're trying to get it all to work together to support your main design project. And in the end, you submit that portfolio of work, which is what we then assess uh, your learning outcomes against. And the learning outcomes, when they're maps, they look a little bit like this. It's kind of a basic grid. So you can see um, down the left-hand side of these things called GAs, which are graduate attributes, which are the main things we're trying to assess. Um, and then the LOs, the learning outcomes, are the things we assess in each unit. So graduate attribute one is, is essentially it's design skills. And you'll see in nearly every unit, except for the professional practice unit, we're assessing your design skills. Now, obviously, within each unit, we break that down into certain things we're looking for. But the um, general principle is you always get a mark for your design skills. The second mark is always communication skills, which can be everything from drawing and model making to your digital skills, different software you use, uh, workshop skills, um, and also verbal presentations and, and reviews. So um, everything is kind of to do with communication or representation of your work is under um, learning outcome two. Uh, learning outcome three is the technical knowledge, so construction or materials, uh, servicing a building, um, all the different uh, technical elements of a building need to be considered. And you'll see that uh, usually those are assessed. Um, there's always one unit a year where we don't assess technical knowledge. We're always looking for the other element, uh, which is uh, graduate attribute five, which is about professional knowledge. So that's where we're not so much talking about what a building is, but we're talking about what architects do themselves. Um, LO4 is contextual knowledge. So we are always assessing your knowledge of architecture as a subject. So history, theory, precedent study, how you research, how you document research, all that's under, assessed under Learning Outcome 4. And then the last one, Learning Outcome 5, um, is uh, assessed, that's where the PDP is assessed. So that's 20%, that's one-fifth of your mark. And that's where we are looking for your engagement in the course, your engagement in independent learning, independent study. Um, so there's a whole variety of things you do there, collaborations, group work. Um, and again, you'll see that with the one exception of the final project, there's always that 20% element of uh, independent study. This is a, a, a great opportunity for students because you have all these other students around you, all these other interesting things going on. And it's a shame to have to say to someone, oh, I can't collaborate with you because I've got to work on my design project. Um, if opportunities come up, you can always manage, if you manage your timetable carefully, manage your uh, schedules, you can always create a day or so where you can go and work on something else or um, maybe a few hours a week where you can work with someone on developing a project. So um, even competitions, we've had students on entering online competitions or online architectural photography competitions and including that in their PDP as uh, examples of um, independent study and entrepreneurship. Um, virtually anything you can think of which is relevant to your studies can be fixed into that learning outcome. A similar system you'll see continues into the master's course. So over the two years of the uh, MArch course, we have a similar series of learning outcomes. And then you graduate. Uh, graduate down on the beach. It's one of the few days we actually have a visit to the beach, although we're right next to one of the best beaches in Britain. That's kind of a, a fun day out. Um, I'll just say a few things about our graduate destinations. Um, obviously, a lot of our students, most of our students, will go into an architectural practice to gain uh, a year's work experience, sometimes two years' work experience before they return to the master's course. Um, so some of these practices, like Architecture PLB and Design Engine, Hampshire County Council, are all based in Winchester. But then um, Brightspace Architects, who actually are the architects who designed some of our student housing. Um, they're based in Fordingbridge, which is nearby. DMWA is a local small practice of young uh, entrepreneurial architects. 
Um, but then some of our students go further afield. So we have had several students go and work at Foster's in London or Glen Howells in London or Birmingham um, or Hoyt Choi Lee in London. So, um, and this is no, by no means exhaustive for many other practices, but uh, they go all over the place. And some of our international students will return to their home countries or study abroad for a while. We've had students go to China and work or um, various other countries. Um, Portugal, we had a student from Portugal who was working back in Portugal. So uh, we will help support you in building up your portfolio for going to interview, but in the end, your work placement is, is up to you to um, secure through interview. Some of our students choose not to continue into architecture um, for one reason or another. They, they discover something else they're interested in. Um, so we've had students work, um, say, for MDM props who build large installations uh, for rock festivals and things like that. Or we have a couple of students who design the shops for Lush Soaps, who are a big local company based in the pool. Um, a couple of our students have gone to work in VFX and film. So Lucas Films, uh, who did the um, Star Wars films. Um, we had a student building the Death Star, I think, um, for one of the Lucas Films. Um, so that did kind of digital industries are also um, always interested in students from architecture who have that spatial understanding and structural understanding. Uh, British Solar Renewables, so solar farms um, have been designed by several of, our, uh, several of our graduates. And we have one student who went to work for the National Trust, which is a historic buildings organization. So she manages a couple of historic buildings. In fact, one of them is a 20th century listed building. The other one is a, an older uh, historic building. But students generally find during the part one that there's all sorts of other opportunities within architecture other than simply being an architect so that they, uh, they were able to cultivate these interests. And quite often we found that um, within their PDP, they've shown evidence there, which allows them to go and get work in other fields because they, they uh, have something in their portfolio which isn't just architecture or just buildings, let's say. They've applied their architectural knowledge to another field. And if you wish to follow up on any of this information, um, of course, visit our website. There's also a Twitter feed and an Instagram feed, which occasionally gets used, but uh, they kind of function to show some of the things that students or the course are doing on um, special outdoor projects and things like that. So um, I hope that's addressed some of your interest in the course, and please contact us if you have any further questions. Thank you.